everyone welcome back to the channel if you are new around here make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you never miss an awesome tutorial today we are diving deep into a fascinating data engineering project that revolves around youtube analytics we are doing this in a very cool way we'll fetch real-time data from youtube api using python then stream it through kafka we then use KSQL DB to perform real-time analytics, but hold on, we're not stopping there. We're going to set up a Telegram bot to get real-time updates directly to your phones. Isn't that awesome? We'll be using Python, Docker, Confluence containerized services like Zookeeper, Kafka, Schema Registry, Confluent Connect, KSQL DB, and Control Center to bring all of this to life. Let's get started. And I also say. And I should also say that all of these are neatly containerized with your Docker Compose. So all you just need to do is Docker Compose up and all the services are running. So let's get started and get into it. I'll start by creating a new project. I'll call the name of the project YouTube Analytics. Analytics. Okay. As usual, we need to ensure that this environment is properly set up. I'll do deactivate. And then I'm going to do source VNV being activate. So if I do which Python, yeah, it's in the right directory. Good. So if I do Python main.py, I have ipycharm. Excellent. So I don't need main.py. I'm going to delete. I'm going to just do a rename. There's no need to delete it. I'll just call this YouTube analytics okay if i can only type youtube analytics so what we want to do we are going to start by having our docker compose i'm going to start with the infrastructure that we'll be using so we have a docker compose this docker compose is going to facilitate all the containers that will be used in the project like the zookeeper the apache instance then we have uh, the schema registry the control center the way to connect to the different connectors. Then we have a KSQL DB for uh, real time streaming and we have KSQL CLI. So those are the multiple uh, parts that we'll be setting up. I already have the Docker Compose ready. I'm going to uh, do a copy paste and I'm going to walk you through the different parts of the Docker Compose to save some time. I'm going to create a new Docker Compose file. By coming into new, I'll call this a uh, new file, call it docker compose.yaml. Now, in this docker compose, we're going to have seven services. These seven services is going to com be comprised of um, Apache Zookeeper, Kafka, Control Center, KSQL DB, Schema Registry, amongst others. What they are going to be doing, we are going to see how each of them are linked together and the connection between them. I have the Docker Compose ready and I'll just do a copy paste so I can talk through them in detail. So I just did that. Then talking through each of them, we are going to have we are going to be having seven services. Like I said, the first one is going to be the Zookeeper, which is the primary, uh, the baseline for our Docker Compose. The Zookeeper is a distributed continuation service that provides synchronization, configuration management, the registry naming for distributed system. It also acts as the backbone for Kafka cluster by managing the brokers and keeping track of their status. So each anytime any of them goes down, they are reported to the Zookeeper and Zookeeper distributes the services accordingly based on the information it has. So the connection is that it Kafka Brokers relies on Zookeeper to manage the distributed uh, brokers in the system. If you are looking at Kafka itself, if you before I go into Kafka, uh, this is the host name and the container. This is the port that is exposed at, and we have the client port. We have the client port. We have the tick time, and then we have the else check. The else check is going to be done every ten seconds with a timeout of five seconds and a retry of five. I think this is going to be replicated for all of them with different uh, test uh, command. For the Kafka broker, Kafka is a distributed streaming platform 
that can publish, subscribe to, store, and process streams of records in real time. It also includes uh, producers, consumers, brokers, and, and topics and the rest. The connection with uh, Zookeeper is that it helps in maintaining the state of Kafka. If you have a Zookeeper, you are going to be it's going to, Zookeeper is going to be used to maintain the state of these Kafka brokers and the topics. The control center, the schema registry, the Confluent Connect, they all interact with Kafka to provide additional services, which we are going to get into shortly. This is the host name and the container name. This is the port. And this is connected to the Zookeeper with this dependency. If you look at this, you have the Kafka Zookeeper Connect, which is the Zookeeper 2181. If you check the ports that Zookeeper is exposed on, is 2181, and the host name and the container name is 2181. It has the different protocol. It's going to be plain text. We are not using SSL for, for now. Uh, this is going to be the plain text that we are going to be having the internal IP internal broadcast on, which is the broker 2902, 29092, and also 9092, which is the external IP address. The rest are just uh, pretty much the configuration of Kafka. And we have the schema registry URL. This is where we are having a dependency to connect to schema registry. This is not directly, this is not a direct dependency. This is just to ping uh, schema registry in case he wants to send services, uh, send requests and response to the schema registry. This is where it's going to be sent across to you, maybe by a post or, or get or any of these, or any other API uh, based uh, request and response uh, uh, method. We also have the metrics reporter. This is not enabled as of this moment, but if you have Confluence support ID, you can put it here. But for now, we are going to put it as anonymous. This is, uh, these are the basic configuration of uh, the broker inst uh, instance. It's going to be running on the inter on the same network. If you look at the the Zookeeper, it's also running on the same network. This is very important that all of them are running on the same network so that by the time they are re sending requests and response, it's easy to communicate with the internal IP and the internal name. This host name, if they are not on the same network, is going to be very difficult. They are going to have an extra level of configuration to be able to reach these uh, um, containers without the that are on different networks. So it's best you have them on the same network for the sake of this uh, tutorial. Then we have the else check. This is going to be run. We're going to be checking the uh, uh, using the CMD bash. We're going to be using bash to check NCZ localhost 9092. So this is going to like ping this guy on 9092 port every 10 seconds with a five time five seconds timeout and it's going to be retried five times just like the zookeeper and once that is done any other services that are dependent on the broker the kafka broker they're going to be triggered after the broker is um, active and ready to receive connection going back to the schema registry the schema registry uh, it provides the centralized repository for storing and retrieving our schemas for Kafka topics. This enables uh, strong typings and schema evolution in your Kafka messages. It is integrated with uh, Kafka to enforce that all data conforms to predefined schema. We have the host name and the container name. So it has a direct dependency on the broker, which is on the condition of service LD. The same way broker also has a direct dependency to the zookeeper on the zookeeper on the service ld condition is exposed on 8081 connected to the bro broker through this um kafka stop bootstrap servers and this is going to be the listener any port at 80, uh, any host name any ip address at 8081 with this schema registry name this is the test to check that it's is um, active and ready to receive connection. Then we have the control center, the connect, KSQL DB server, and the CLI. So for the control center, the control center in here, it, it's a web-based interface for managing and monitoring Kafka clusters. So you can create, modify, monitor topics, and observe your Kafka cluster, and even perform administrative stacks, like if you want to delete and, and, and the rest. And, more complex stuff on the ui you can do it with the control center this guide interacts directly with the broker and it also has the, another dependency to the schema registry and other services that we're going to be discussing shortly something like the ksql db the schema registry they are all going to be 
um, using the API base to perform their request response internally. So these are the URL for uh, for KSQL DB for schema registry. So if you start up the control center and these guys are not active or they are down for some reasons, they are going to, uh, the, the control center is going to report maybe a zero service. If it is just a single instance you have, it's going to re return zero service. I'll show you shortly. And by the time they come back up and you do a refresh, you're going to see uh, maybe one that they are ready to accept connection. Aside from that, the same, we have the health check for the control center in case anybody is uh, depending on the control center. But this guy depends solely on two, uh, two containers. We have the broker and we have the schema registry. So it's going to be exposed on 902, 9021. And this, it has a direct dependency on the broker and uh, the schema registry, which is here. These are the, uh, the two direct dependency it has and the condition that they are both LD. If any of them goes down or it's not, no longer, uh, it's not in a good condition, control center is not going to be started up. So once this guy, is, uh, this guy reports a service LD condition, this guy will start up and it's, uh, it will be ready to accept connection. We have the Confluent Connect. The Confluent Connect, I'm using the uh, Confluence Demo Server uh, Connect Data Gen to do my connection here. So this guy is going to help us to connect to other systems or other parts of the ecosystem. So the Confluent Connect is a part of uh, a larger Confluent platform and is used to connect to Kafka with other systems. You want, if you want to connect Kafka with other systems like databases, key value store, search indexes like Elasticsearch and the rest, and, and so much more, you can use this Confluent uh, Connect to do the connection. It helps you to retrieve data from external systems and push it into Kafka and outside of, um, from Kafka to other systems too, it helps you to do that. Uh, it's going to be exposed on 8083. I'm mounting a, a volume called connectors in here, and I'm going to be using the custom connector, user share custom connectors directory to, to save my custom connectors that I'll be using on the UI. I'll show you how this works in a second, just stay, stay tuned. Then in the environment, we are going to have uh, some uh, specific uh, configurations here, which is dependency on the broker is directly dependent on the broker and the schema registry, which on the condition of um, service LD. And these are the basic configurations like the, the path and then the, the converter key. We are, we are using by default, we are using the Avro uh, schema converter for the connect value. And for the keys, we are using the string converters. And the rest are just uh, classes and class parts. I have um, else check every 30 seconds for 10 seconds, and uh, it's going to be retrying that for five seconds. Then we have the KSQL DB. KSQL DB server is a distributed data store that is built on Kafka. It allows you to perform real time computations on Kafka streams using SQLite queries. So you can, you can type. Uh, select stuff from just like you do in something like a MS SQL, Oracle, Postgres, and the rest. You can do select stuff from your Kafka streams. Uh, these are basic configuration for the uh, KSQL uh, DB, and it has a connect URL, the listeners, and the schema registry, and the broker, uh, the bootstrap server. These are very important to make sure that this um, server works. And it has a direct dependency on broker and the schema registry too. And uh, we have the KSQL DB CLI, which is the last, uh, but not the least of this, uh, the last, but not the least of these services that are going to be working with. It's a command line interface for interacting with KSQL DB server. You can create streams, tables, perform real-time analytics, right from the command line. You don't, we, we don't necessarily need this, but the reason why this is going to be there is by the time we want to maybe run anything on the UI and uh, maybe we want to run the same on the terminal, we can use this KSQL DB CLI to do the connection. But for, for our sake, we, we don't really need to have this because we are going to be doing much of our computations on the UI. So I'm, I might need to comment this out to save some computation power. But 
if you really want to run the same script that we're running on the ui if you want to run it on the cli you can uncomment this and add it to your to your list but for now we're going to do uh, a comment now i have my network which everybody is running on if you look at all of them they're on the same network uh let's just double check that to be sure that all of them are on the same network the control center the network confluent and uh, what else we have network confluent we have the broker network confluent and then the zookeeper network confluent now that all these are done we are going, i'm going to fire up our terminal i'm going to clear this i'm going to do before I do that, I'm going, I need to ensure that my Docker instance is ready. And uh, I have maybe, if you have multiple containers, it doesn't matter. Um, for now, I don't have any running container. I'm going to now do Docker Compose up. Docker Compose up uh, in detached mode. So I don't, I don't see everything in the terminal. Now, if you don't have these services, uh, if, you, if you don't have this image on your system, for the first time they're going to be pulled from confluent or docker hub and once that is done they're going to be created just like you you are seeing here but i already have the images if you look at my docker and i have images uh you see that i have uh, some pretty nice images here which are these guys and you can see the versions of all of them with tags you can see them here so that's why i'm able to run directly once you do it once you can spin up multiple containers and spin down anytime you want so that's how it, it works so we're just waiting for the zookeeper and the broker and the rest of the services to come up i'm going to do a fast forward so we don't wait till everything is ready because it can take maybe a few minutes so i'll just do a, a fast forward at this point Now that the control center is up and running, I'll just do a refresh and see what we have on our control center. Now this is being visualized. We have the LD clusters, the unhealthy, unhealthy clusters. You have the broker topics, uh, partitions and the rest, and we have connected services. The good thing about the control center, that's why I, I, I said about, I, I was talking about the REST API the other time. Now, even though the control center is up and the connect cluster is not up, the case DB just came up. They are all communicating on the API level. So by the time the connect clusters is up and running, you will see that this guy is going to change to connect cluster changes to one. And if I do a refresh, let's see if uh, it's ready to connect now. Um, while the connect cluster keeps coming up, I think it's still booting up. So we just quickly go through the, what we have on the UI have the overview this is where the brokers are and then we have our topics uh, even though we don't have anything these are internal topics and these are the partitions already on, available on the system we don't have any connect clusters at the moment but we have a ksql db cluster that is currently running nothing in the persistence query at this moment but we still have uh, a, sing a single cluster running we go to the each of the services that we have on the left which are the the brokers the topics the connect ksql db and the rest if you go to the brokers if we want to look at them individually we have this is producing at this moment we don't have any activity running on the system but it's producing around 15 16 uh 16 kilobyte per second and it's consuming 25 kilobyte per second by the time we start pushing data to this, this statistics is going to be uh, way higher than this. We have it's 58 topics, 191 partitions, and the rest. You can see that the zookeeper is connected to this service. If you click on this zookeeper, you can see what uh, the metrics that are being retrieved from the zookeeper and the system. 
Uh, if I go back one level up, and uh, we have the disk, uh, seven megabyte, self balancing is on. Uh, we, we don't need the tier story. We just, we are just doing something very simple here. Nothing too uh, complex. Uh, going back to the topics. So we have the brokers, which host topics, right? And bro brokers are hosted on clusters. So we have the topic and I, I'm already hiding internal topic. If I unhide, unhide them, you can see all of these uh, internal topics. These are the 55 internal topics that we have. But for now, we just uh, hide them. We don't really need any of them. This is for KSQL processing, the connect config. I think the connect is coming up, but it's still not, uh, it's still out of sync at all at this moment. So, but we won't worry so much about this. We have the Docker connect, Docker connect upstairs and the rest. Uh, if we check connect, connect is right up and running now. It's back up. And if you check in the home section, you can see our connect cluster is now one. Even though, there's a dependency on each of them, but it's not a direct dependency. It's technically indirect because it's only when they come up, then the system pings them and adds them to the service. So that's how it works. And uh, if you go back to, uh, we have the connect, we have the KSQL DB, which is currently running. And if you click on it, we can run our, uh, if you have a, uh, the editor, this is where we can write our KSQL DB streams. We have the flow, which is this idea? This is more like the 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 hierarchy or or the the flow of the processing that we in our in our editor and the streams that we write. So this is the stream where we have uh, this can be replicated from a particular topic. This is going to have uh, a, a, a an indefinite like or a continuous uh, preview of what is coming into the topic itself. I'm going to show you in a few minutes how this works and uh, how you can you know play with, around with. Um, these streams we have the table which are technically the the kafka topics uh the persistent queries we don't have anyone as of this moment and these are some of the settings that we have the consumers these are the listeners that are listening to the topics on the system we have the replicators none is configured out of this moment this is the default cluster that i have the, the these are the default connections uh, configurations self-balancing tier storage is not on at this moment it's fine but for now we are we just have only self-balancing if you have multiple brokers one of them is going to be switched over to the other so but for now we have just a single broker yeah that's just uh, the brief overview of how the control center works and what we can do with it then going back to our code now that our architecture is up and running and our system is uh, ready to accept connection, the next thing we need to do is we need to get our API key from YouTube. So if you if you notice, I have my console cloud google.com yeah, uh, for the YouTube analytics. So if you don't have a project, I think it's best to create a new project. If you click on this drop down and you click on new project, you'll be able to create a new project. So clicking on the new project, you can have maybe YouTube analytics, whatever it is you, you want it to be called, then it's, it's going to be uh, added to your, your list of projects. But I've already done that. So if you go, if I go back, then it's going to bring you to the dashboard. Once you have this on, the, on your dashboard, I think what you need to do, we are just going to be using a single product, which is the use, use uh, the API. If you if you are finding it hard to to get all of them in here, there are so many products here. Uh, you can come to the API services, or you can just type API and services here. If you have, if you type API, and you can have the API and services enabled API and services. But either way, if you click on the the one on, that is on the left, API and services and you click on enabled API, or you come directly in here and you go into enabled API and services, you are going to land on this page. It doesn't matter which one you're using. So you need to find in this, uh, in this list, you need to find uh, YouTube data API version three. This is the one we are going to be using. And if you click on YouTube API, I already enabled this, but if you haven't enabled it, you are going to see a single a button here to say enable. So let me disable this for now. I'll say disable. 
and then I'll enable it. So you see what you are going to see. If, it, if this is your first time enabling this service, you are going to have something like this, something like this, and then you're going to have to enable this API. Once you do this API enablement, so you can go back, come back to the API documentation. Uh, I think, yeah, the API is enabled and you can see the traffic in the last 30 days, okay? All right, uh, coming back in here, uh, we just need to go back to the YouTube uh, API documentation. So coming to the to Google, you can have YouTube YouTube API documentation. Okay. If I can only type YouTube API documentation, and I click on the YouTube API documentation. Uh, you can see this, I'm going to click on the reference. Now in the API reference, you are going to have, you are going to need uh, basic stuff. But what we will be particular about are two things, the videos and the playlist. For now, let's just uh, focus on the videos. In the video section, if you want to call the API, you you need to request for an API key. And how do you do that? Uh, you come into this and you come to uh, credentials. If you come to the credentials, I already requested for an API key. So what you, if, you, if, if you don't have an API key, you need to do a create credential at this point and have an API key. So this is going to create an API key for you that we're going to be using in this project. I'm going to delete this API key once I publish this video. So even if you, if you are using this API key, it's not going to work for you. So I'll just copy this API key and go to our code. Okay. I'm going to have a config file. I'm going to call it config.local. Config.local. And I'm going to call this, uh, I'll say YouTube. YouTube. And I'll call this API key. It's going to be this. All right. And then once I have that, that is uh, done. And then I can come to the topics. Uh, no, I mean, in the documentation, you have a get request to the Google APIs.com, YouTube version three, then you have the video. So it's going to be a get request. I've got, I'll just copy this and uh, let's see if we can get something. From there, I'll just come in here uh, in our YouTube analytics. I'll delete everything here. And I'm going to import request for my uh, for the request. So but I think I need to do a pip install request. It's going to imp uh, install request for me, and uh, I can do response. Okay. If uh, name equals to main, just uh, run response equals to request.get. I'll put the URL here and I'll say print response.text. And let's see what we have. Let's see if this is going to work or not. I'll just save this and then. Uh, YouTube analytics.py. Let's see what we have. It says permission denied. So we need to add our API key. Uh, I'll just do a quick pass of this API key. I'm going to come in here and have, uh, I'll put this in a folder actually. I'll just put this in a config folder and I'll move in this in there. I'll call it, I'll call this guy a constant. Okay, constant, constant dot py. This is where I'll be uh, passing the, the configurations that we have in this, uh, the config file. So in my terminal, I'm going to install config parser, pip install, 
config parser and I'm going to have import config parser and uh, I'm going to say parser equals to config parser dot config parser and I'm going to have parser dot read uh, I need to import OS because I'm going to be referring to the path I'm going to import OS I'm going to have OS dot path dot join then I'm going to have OS dot path dot direct name directory name okay I'm going to have file then I'm going to be passing this with just one step ahead I'm going to have config dot local uh, what else do I have I have config local and I can now have a YouTube API key it's going to be parser.get it's in it's under YouTube I'll copy this and uh, I have my YouTube and then the key is the API key it's going to be API key and then in my YouTube analytics I can say import constants I'll say from constants import YouTube API key okay then by the time I'm sending this request I'm going to be sending this request uh, I'm going to be sending the API key alongside the request and that will be done by having a comma and having a JSON which is going to be the key it's going to be YouTube API key I think that should do it and let's see if I rerun this uh, not config parser uh, just YouTube analytics it says no section YouTube yeah and I have is because I was in in this directory so no need to go up now it said no filter selected so we're expecting one of ID my rating and the chat so we just need to pass the the ID of the video and I'm going to have ID I go to the channel and uh, youtube.com code with you and I'll just pick one of the videos there I'll just say I'm picking this guy I'll copy this link address and I'll come back in here get the ID from here and I'll put this here okay and if I check this again any other thing that we need I think that's all we need so we have the kind the items the video so if we need more uh, more properties from this um, from YouTube I think we need to specify exactly what we need so that's where we just need to add uh, if we if you had a part I'm going to add the things that I need I'll be needing the snippet I'll be needing the statistics statistics and I'll be needing the status okay those are the three things that I'll be needing if I rerun this uh, I have uh, more data now and uh, that's good I'll just clear this up so what I'm going to be doing I'm going to have let's say video is going to be I'll call this a uh, title which is going to be coming from a uh, response um, in my snippet okay I'll get my title uh, title I'm going to have uh, the likes which is going to be coming from the statistics that uh, from the, of the video which is going to be uh, response I'll get the statistics statistics which is somewhere here I have the statistics I can see the view count like count favorite count okay what else do we need 
I think we should get the the thumbnail. I'll use the default thumbnail. I'm going to have. Uh, this one because we JSON the loads. We want to load that because I didn't load it before. I need to import JSON. Import JSON, and I have JSON the loads. I'm going to load a uh, response dot uh, text. All right. I think we just uh, once we get this, we get the items. All right, it's no longer vid, it's no longer response, so it's now video. I'm going to replace this with a video. I'll replace the, each of them. Yeah, and once that is done, we should have we should have all green. Now, I'll just uh, remove this print in here, and I'll we'll run this and. Uh, yeah, I have this. I think we can do a pretty print now for this video. And I can have from pprint import pprint. All right. And if I do a clear and I'm doing Python YouTube analytics. Okay, I have uh, this laid out pretty nicely i have my comments the favorites the likes the thumbnail the title and the views all right good so now that we have this it's easy for us to uh maybe want to format this in a particular for uh, in a particular way uh we still need to adjust these likes and the rest so these are coming in strings which we need to change those ones to integers okay and I'll just uh, clear this and I'll rerun that. I have, yeah, good, uh, the name and the, re the rest. Okay, good. So what we want to do right now is we want to push this data to Kafka. So I just do a refresh on, on the control center. All right, my KSQL DB cluster is up and running. The connect cluster is waiting to be connected. But right now I can send requests to, I can send data to the Kafka queue and then we have uh, data on the queue. So what I want to do is I'm going to need a package so I can send data to my Kafka queue. I'll call the, uh, the name of the package is going to be Kafka Python. So I'll just do pip install. Kafka Python. Now, once my uh, installation is done, I just need to do an import. I'm going to be importing uh, from Kafka. From Kafka, import Kafka producer. Kafka producer. All right. And then just down here, in here, I'll just have my Kafka producer, which is going to be producer equals to Kafka producer. And I'm going to have my bootstrap servers, bootstrap servers. Bootstrap server. And I have my Kafka producer. Now, once I have my Kafka producer, what I'm going to need to do is, uh, since I have a, just a single response there i'll just put my producer here and see if i can produce this data to uh, i can send this data to the kafka queue so what i'm going to do producer dot send i'm going to have my topic is going to be Uh, what else do I need to do? I just need to run this. Okay. I'm sure many of you saw that. And by the time this is sent across, you can see I have this guy here. And 
on the topic list if i do a refresh i have youtube videos now now i have a topic that is being created so if i click on this and you want to see the messages i'm going to see them here so what i need to do is i'm just going to rerun this again and see if i have uh, other messages coming in okay and you can see that i have this data here i have the title the the likes comment views favorites and thumbnail good but this is not the only thing we want to be monitoring we want to be monitoring multiple videos so this obviously works for a single video but what we want to do is more than just a single video we want to be able to monitor all the list of videos that we specified and google helps us with that with a playlist so what we're going to do is we go to the channel and i'm going to go to youtube.com go with yusuf and i'm going to go to playlist section so in the playlist section i have a video with eight videos and i'm going to use that video which is this one the python tutorials i'll just copy the full playlist and copy link and uh, i'll go i'll go back to my config.local i'm going to change this playlist id to this other playlist id all right now the playlist id is going to give me access to this uh, playlist and i should be able to see all these eight videos in this playlist all right these eight videos so what i'm going to do uh, in this youtube analytics i'm going to do a refactoring of this um, code then i'm going to explain afterwards what i'm doing so far so i'm going to change all this code move them here and there and then we'll discuss it shortly i think the first thing we need to do is look at the documentation for the playlist items so if you come to developers of google.com and then you come to the playlist sec playlist item section in here you should be able to see the list section and you'll see that oh, you need to make a call a get request to playlist items from there you need to specify these required parameters which are the part and then either of these two either playlist id or the id itself then the rest are optional uh, we need to call this api pass some parameters to it and then from there we continue uh, so just instead of just these videos i'm going to comment these guys out for now and uh, just copy this part okay and uh, i'll just quickly do in here i'll just uh, copy this api url and i'll paste this here all right and then uh, this is telling us that we need to have a part which is going to be content details snippets status and id could be any of them and uh, we just have uh, we remove statistics we replace with content details then the id is going to be replaced with a playlist id all right and uh, i'll just uh, call this from the constant from the constants i'm going to have playlist play list id it's going to be pass out or get youtube and i'm going to have in my config the local playlist id and i'm going to paste this there all right coming back to my youtube analytics i'm going to import that which is going to be playlist uh, id so i can use that in here that would be my playlist id all right i have this uh, key i have the playlist id and i have the part i'm expecting to have uh response to text and if i run this on the terminal i'm expecting to see the first five five videos of the playlist so i have total page results is eight but i'm seeing results per page is five so i'm expecting five videos here this is the first one the second one the third one the fourth and the the fifth so the good thing about with this api is it has a next page token so if you want to see the next page you need to pass uh, a page token to this uh, request and then you copy the page token here which is going to be page token i'm going to pass that 
in here okay and i'm going to save and then rerun that then i have the second page as you see three one two three yeah i'm seeing the three the uh the last three videos however you can see that this is this has changed to previous page token so it's no longer next page so this is the end of the page so the good thing with this is we we just found a way to navigate to the next page so for us to be able to do this we are going to use something like python generators where we can get all of them in a specific list so for now if there is no if we if there is no page token we start with the first page but if you pass the next page token to it then it goes to the second page and then the the subsequent pages so i'm going to refactor this a little bit and i'm going to bring in some more functions to help us with this uh, part of the code so i'll just explain that in a little bit so i'm going to have a, a function called fetch page i'm going to pass in the url i have I already have the api key then i'm going to have the parameters and then the page token so if i pass none to it it's going to start from the beginning with the first page if i don't if i pass uh the, the the page token to it it continues from that page that is passed to it so i'm going to have the params is going to be parameters i'm going to destructure all the parameters there and add them to this new object then i'm going to pass the key which is going to be the uh, youtube api key then i'm going to have the page token which is going to be the the page token then i'm going i just need to make a, a request i'm going to put that in the response request the get the url and then the params all right then the payload which is the response that i get from there i'm going to use json to load that from response to text all right then i just let me just add a import login i'm just going to put login the debug instead of that i'll do info okay and uh, i can get the response goes here and i can put that as percentage s and i'll put that as payload all right then i can return the payload so this is going to be a generic function so we can pass in any specific video and it's going to load this for us if you have a page to page token it's going to load the page if we don't then it just load the the first page so this is going to be very useful when we have uh multiple pages that we're going to be passing the page token to so how do we call this uh we're going to be calling that in the main function however before i do that i'm going to have another function for the pagination so i'm going to have the fetch page list okay then i'm going to have the url the parameters and then the page token now while this is true i'm just going to explain this a little bit let me just uh, finish this touch i'm going to go into this fetch page uh, with the url the parameters and then the page token then from there i yield okay the payload uh, items so i need to get the page token from that response okay just like getting the page token from from this guy from here uh, where is the page token yeah this next page token just like getting the extracting this page token from that response so i'm going to do payload.get and i'm going to have next page token okay now if there is no page token that means it's the end then we just break the the loop now once this is done what we want to do next is we want to go back to our main function and uh yeah i'll just come back in here i'll just change this up a little bit 
and uh, instead of this guy i'll just uh, fill this up here i'll just say for video item because i'm going to get multiple items uh, in fetch uh, page list so i'm going to be passing in I like it, it looks a little bit more readable. So I'm just going to extract the video ID from there, which gives me the video ID is going to be a video item. I'm going to change this from items to video item. It's the single one, uh, video item. Then I'm going to extract the content, content uh, details, which is uh, what I have in here. Aside from the snippet, if you look, in here i have uh, content details so i get the video id from there then once i have this video id the next thing i want to do is i want to get the properties of that particular video so i'm going to have for video in a fetch page list okay and uh, this is going to we're going to use the same uh, format uh, i have at this time around we're going to change the url from the playlist item uh, what am i doing i'll just copy this and uh, in here i'll put the playlist items there instead of the playlist items i change these to videos okay then um i pass in the id of the video which is going to be the video ID. All right. And I'm going to have, uh, I think I need to put this in a, in a string. Okay. I need to get the parts. The parts that I'll be uh, re retrieving from there is going to be the snippet, the statistics, just like we did earlier on, then the status. We really don't need these two guys. Uh, this, the content of the status is uh, public, so there is no need. I, I think we only need public videos. We don't need private. So once I have this, I have the snippet and statistics. And uh, the first page is what we are fetching. We don't need the other pages, so it's okay. At least for now. So the next thing we want to do, once we have this, uh, I'll just uh, say, uh, login the info video here okay and I'm going to put this in a string and I'm going to pass the uh, video uh, in a p pp print uh, for the video all right I thought I imported pp print from pp print import pp print all right and I have that. So let's see if this is working before we, we adjust the rest of this code. All right, I'm going to, so we, are, we need to be able to see the, the video and then we should be able to see the, the response. So we're expecting two responses there. Perfect. So it looks like this is, uh, this is promising. See, I think I think I need to set the login level. The basic config. I'm going to have the level. It's going to be login dot info. Okay. And I think I'm going to just clear this and rerun. This is fine. So I have the videos. Uh, so what I need to do now is format this uh, response in the way I want. Uh, that's where this guy comes in. I'll just pick this up. Okay. I'll just pick this up and uh, I'll say format response. Uh, format response. I'm going to put this here and I'll just call this uh, video. Okay, and I'll just do a return video rest from here. So what I'll just do, uh, what else do I need? 
uh, just do a formatting for there. Uh, once I have that in this video, I'll just do um, I'll just say format response. I'm going to put that video in here and that should give me I think pretty print and let's see what we have if I rerun this excellent so I have uh, let's see how many videos do I have in here I have one two two three four five six seven and uh, eight eight yeah so it looks like this is working as expected and uh, that is really good so what we just need to do is we want to push all this data to to kafka all right so did a refresh and the the cluster is healthy so going in here i'm going to go into the topics again because i just restarted my docker containers i think the top the, the previous topics will be gone i'll just try and publish to it and see what we have all right so these are the the default topics that are there and i'm going to run this again however because i just have my face my uh okay i think i might have deleted that i'll just bring in the from kafka import uh, kafka producer and in here i'll just uh I just get my producer it's going to be kafka producer uh, with the bootstrap servers it's going to be localhost and um, kafka ports which is the 1992 the one we set in our docker compost if you can still recall and um, once we have the producer, the next thing we want to do is we want to send this data to the Kafka queue. All right. Now that we are formatting the data in this format, uh, we have uh, the title, likes, comment, views, favorites, thumbnail. I'll just come in here. I'll just comment this for now. And then uh, I'll publish this. So I'm going to have producer. All right, I'll just move this up a little bit. So it's trying to connect and send the data to the Kafka queue. And we did. So if we look into this, it's okay. And I think, let's see if we start from zero offsets. Can we retrieve the data? Yeah, we have. We are able to retrieve them. And you can see each of the data laid out pretty nicely. Now that we're able to send data to the Kafka queue, what we need to do next is to have this data being processed by the KSQL DB in real time stream. So I'm going to comment out the flush for now. And then we just need to put this video ID as part of the requests that are that are being sent across to KSQL stream. So we're going to have a key here. We're going to have key equals to video id dot encode and then we need to encode this in utf8 i'll just uh, send this down in here and we should be good okay now we need to go back to our control center all right under the ksql db we just come there and uh, it says ksql db is running good so what we need to do is we need to create uh, a stream. So the way we create a stream is just like creating a table in normal SQL, except the keyword is stream. So we have create stream and we're going to use YouTube videos and uh, we can have the different uh, keys that we have in our code, just like we have in here. 
so we have the video id uh, we have the title likes comment then of course the video id so i'm just going to quickly type that out then i'm going to link this up to a particular topic so it knows which topic to be listening to so i'm going to have uh, with then the kafka topic it's going to be youtube uh, videos the same name with the stream and this is going to be json so you can use uh, different formats like avro and the rest but i'm just going to stick to json for now and if i click on run hopefully the, the syntax is correct and the the query is right okay good so it's uh, okay and you can see we have a success and it's stream created so what we need to do now is i'm going to write select star from this all right and i'm going to run this so anytime a query comes into the kafka queue anytime any data comes into the kafka queue we're supposed to see it in the case of db so let's test that out okay connection complete and then we just come in here and wait for a little bit i'll just rerun this uh, i wasn't running that so it's processing the query and let's see what happens and you can see we have the video id and the rest of the data good so now we can run complex queries on this select star from this i'm going to have a group by uh, i'll just select video id from here all right and then group by the video id so what am i selecting so once i have my video id i'm going to select some other fields this is going to be something like the title i'm going to get the latest by offset all right the title and then as a title i'm going to have latest by offset we're going to have comments and i'm going to have the second one uh, I'll leave it at that for now. In fact, I'll just let's see what we have directly as uh, comments. Uh, I'm going to run this and see how the you the the query behaves before continuing. Yeah, because I'm doing a select, I need to add any changes, of course. Okay. So let's see what we have. And you can see I have uh, the newest data, which is title and comments. However, nothing is changing. Uh, you can see that there are no changes to each of them, which is uh, one way. Uh, I'll say it's uh, good in one way. And uh, I'll just do the same for the rest of the data we have. I'm going to have. Uh, likes comment views favorites okay i uh, i have comments latest by offsets and this should give us uh, the latest information about that so if you look at the real-time video stream if you come back in here we have the likes this 45 each of these of these guys i'm going to have the second the two and uh for now i'll just leave it at that and i'll stop this and rerun the query and i'll send this in again okay so i have uh, the real-time video stream and you can see i have uh, comments are being represented as an array so we are going to for each of this array you are going to have the previous and then the the latest uh, so it's still 45 it's not pulling the latest data from here this one nice 46 you can see the previous like was 45 
the latest was 46 so we need to separate the previous and the current all right and we come in here and uh, we get the first one as previous comment previous and then we have comment current and this will be two the same thing will be repeated for the likes as uh, likes previous and likes current this will be one and this will be two then for the views we have views i'll just paste this and uh, we get a one we get a two all right uh, views previous and views current then the last one but not the least we have favorites previous and then two okay and uh, current all right so if we rerun this i'm going to stop this and rerun yeah this is going to be where we are going to be inserting our data into so what i'm going to do i'm going to like another video uh, so we can see the the changes that are coming in all right i just liked another video which is the data analysis with chat gpt i'll just rerun this so we can pull the latest data in we use this to create a table so we just do create a table youtube tracking I think we do YouTube analytics, maybe changes. Okay. Then with the Kafka topic of, uh, YouTube. So this will be the Kafka topic for this particular table that we are going to be tracking. So. And we're going to create this as that, and there's no need for image changes at this point. We just need to send it directly in there, and I'm going to run and create this table. An unknown error code. I'm going to rerun this. It says YouTube analytics changes already exist. Okay, good. So that means the first time it's actually run it i'm going to select stuff from this uh i'm going to say where likes previous is not equals to likes current all right from the image changes so what i'm doing here is i'm listening to this uh table which is um, where I'm writing this data into where the likes previous is not equal to the likes current. And anytime a new changes comes in, we pull that in into the queue. I'm going to send this in again and let's see what we have. I just sent that in, but I haven't liked any of the videos. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to like another video. All right. And uh, I just, uh, I just liked another video and I'm going to send this in. Okay, I just did. And we can just wait for the, the video to show up on the UI. And you can see I have the video right here, which is the likes previous is 14, the new likes is 15. The views are the same, the comments are the same, but the, the likes has changed. So this is good. Uh, it looks like this is working. So the next thing we need to do, we just need to listen for changes on this particular topic. That way, anything that happens on that particular topic is being sent to our Telegram. So the way you do that is we go, we launch up our Telegram. I'm going to have a Telegram here. So you, you message it bot father and tell the bot father you need uh, 
you uh, a bot so you start with uh, maybe slash new bot and uh, just uh, do new bot okay and it says all right what are we going to call it i'm going to call it youtube analytics bot and uh, now let's use a username so we're going to have youtube analytics analytics uh, analytics bot uh, okay it says it's taken so we have youtube analytics i'll say code with uh, you youtube bot it looks like it's getting too long uh code with you youtube bot all right uh yeah it says done congratulations on your new bot you find it as this and uh this is the access token to access the the it's good so this is the the token so the next thing we need to do is we need to uh do a get request to this particular um api so i'm going to go into our terminal and then we run uh, a call to see if we can reach this uh, particular bot the org then i'll paste in the not this one i'll paste in the bot id from bot papa bot father i'll just copy that and then paste this and i'll do slash get updates and let's see what we have so it says the result is true all right good so the next thing that i want to do is i'll i'll, I'll click on this guy and i'll press uh, start okay and if i retry this i should see the latest information from there so i have the chat id this is what i need i need this chat id so i can send data request uh, message requ messages to that particular channel so this is the chat id that i'll be sending data to and i'm going to copy this so the next thing we need to do is uh we need to connect our kafka to the telegram bot all right i'm going to just copy this uh in the in the background and we can go to our connect and we can go to connect clusters uh, connect default we don't have any so if you click on add connector if you're using this docker container with the configurations that we did you see this for but we need uh, additional uh, connector to to add to, to be added to the list so i'm going to in my connector folder i'm going to copy uh, the connector that i downloaded uh, i downloaded it from the confluence http sync uh, website i'm going to show you the link the link is here Confluent Kafka Connect HTTP. So if you go to Confluent.io or Confluent in Kafka Connect, you see the HTTP sync connector. And uh, once that is downloaded, you just need to add it to the list of connectors in here. So I'm, do I'm just going to quickly do that right away. I'll copy the connector and I'll add it to the list. okay so i think i need to do an unzip in here i'll just unzip that and i'm going to go into connectors i'm going to do unzip once that is unzipped and then we have the date uh, we have the uh, http connector in our connector folder which is linked to our custom connectors in the Docker Compose. We just have to restart the connect container. So I'll do that in the background. I'm going to restart the connect container. Then after restart, we should have the HTTP connector on the UI. So we need to go back to our KSQL DB. All right. And we need to create our stream that will be connected directly to the Telegram output stream. So we are going to have a create stream. 
and um, that's going to be telegram output stream okay uh we're going to have a couple of uh columns that's going to be chat id which is going to be vaca or you can say string or you say uh and the second one is going to be text which is going to be vaca it's going to have a kafka topic we're going to have the kafka topic is going to be the same name i'm just going to copy this and paste it here the partitions is going to be one we're not doing anything heavy and then the last one is value format it's going to be avro okay now once this is done i need to run this query and this is supposed to create this will create a stream for us as well as a topic okay so we have a kafka topic and we have a stream so it's created successfully excellent i'm going to click on my connect and then click on the connect default add the connector and then in my http sync i'm just going to click on that and select my telegram output stream topic so i just need to click on that and then the rest of this information will be pre by, by default are populated for me so the next thing i want to do now is fill in these uh, properties so the first thing we need to do is change the name i'm going to change the name to telegram box sync telegram box uh, sync all right you can change it to anything you like but i'm just using that maybe we can change it to outbox or something like that one i'll just leave it at uh, telegram boxing all right so we don't have anything in the tax no key converter because we'll be using by default avro schema converter by default so there is no need to specify but if you have uh, if you want to use json like um, approach you may have to specify your json classes we usually i think it's from org apache json json converter or something like that then for the transform nothing like that we don't need anything in the predicates error handling minimum delay errors no um, we have error tolerance dead letter key replication factor by default this is set to three but we are going to set it to one all right then the http url is going to be from this uh, api i'll just copy this url and i'm going to have it pasted here okay change the name to instead of get updates it's going to be send message you can look up the documentation for how this works i mean telegram api documentation so we have the request method which is going to be post we're going to be doing the post the headers is going to be content type we need to specify that this is going to be a json so we are going to be sending application slash json okay then what else do we need no proxy host or port http timeout no general authentication authorization no uh retries no regex no batching so our body format do we need to specify this let's see json we're going to be sending that as json uh we're sending this as array so we're not sending json as array it's going to be false so it's only going to be a single record so and we want that to be a json all right then we have maximum batch size that will be one all right the next thing we want to apply to that is a batch prefix separate json decimal that's all and uh, no security um result pattern replication factor is going to be one for the results and for the error also it's going to be one bootstrap servers we have to specify this we have a broker 29092 that's our uh, bootstrap server so if you have multiple bootstrap servers you have to add all of them here and uh, that's all uh, we don't need to add any key format and the rest we just need to add the next we do next and this is going to generate a json file for us that we can reuse in case we want to 
we, we delete this so we can download the connector here and then by the time you want to add a new one you just uh imports with uh the, import the config file okay so i'm going to launch this time we see our telegram uh sync the telegram box sync is working and it says it's running so if you come back to ksql db and we uh we need to now do a testing and insert data into this so we have insert into this table uh, the values are going to be i'm going to copy the chat id from here and uh i'll just uh, paste this here and for the text i'm going to have testing all right and at the end of the day i had a semicolon i send this in there to see if we can uh yeah once this is inserted we can test if it is uh if it is uh showing on our telegram and you can see our testing is coming in so let's do another thing uh let's see is this coming into telegram and we send this again and uh, let's see if you can see that it's coming into telegram excellent so now that this is working uh we look at our topics again and our topics are working as expected now we just need to go into our code base all right we need to run this analytics and see if there is any activity uh, since then i had this sent to just show that each of the titles are sent but it is it's there's really no need for this. I'm going to just leave it. If you want, you can add it. If you don't, you can remove it. So I'm just going to do Python. Uh, just clear this up and uh, YouTube analytics. So if I run this again, uh, this is, is sending all of them to the queue and we can see if there's any changes. If we come in here and we say select star from YouTube analytics changes stream where likes current is not equals to likes previous. Okay. If you check this, we can check if we have uh, new likes. Uh, we don't. So lastly, we just need to get this in here and we will be uh, with this from the changes stream we are going to format our output into two columns so the first one is going to be the chat id which is going to be the the chat id that i copied okay i'm going to have this as a string and this is going to be as a chat id okay I'm going to put it like this and from here. Okay, good. Now, the next thing we need to do is I am going to have the text that I want to display when there is a likes uh, changes or there is a comment change or something like that. Okay. So I'm going to have for the likes, I'm going to have likes changed. I'm going to have uh, the first one is going to be like this. I should concatenate this. I'm going to have this concatenated with the likes previous. Okay. And uh, I think likes change for our just had the first one. Uh, the title, that's going to be the, the title, is it? Telegram not this one change the stream I have the title all right and uh, once that title comes in I'm going to have a single dash between them to show that uh, the title has ended I have my likes previous um, and I'm going to have the next one as a column and the new likes likes uh, current this is for likes uh, then that's all i uh, i think if you if you want to add other stuff you can add them and this is going to be as uh, text 
uh let's see i have likes change for title this likes previous this likes current that okay and uh once i do this i need to do insert into telegram output stream okay and this is gonna give me the chat id and uh the text those are the two columns and i can run this query and see uh okay since i'm doing select I don't, there's no need to uh, specifically do that i just do insert into telegram output stream and then select that from there so i need to just like a video i'll just go to the channel and uh like a video from there so i'm just going to like a real time data stream let's see okay it's already liked i'm going to like uh, how to create qr codes with python and i just did a like on that so i'll put uh, i'm going to uh, run the code for that to pull that into the system and once that is done the next thing for me is to run the query uh, it says syntax error layer likes current okay um i need to add a comma to that and i'll rerun this yeah of course i need to because they are integers so i need to cast them as string uh string and uh, of course i need to do the same cast as a string with these two and that should be okay and when i run this it says this was successful so he was able to insert something into that and voila you can see that the data is inserted like exchange for how to create qr codes with python the previous like was nine the new likes is 10. and that's how to insert real-time data into the telegram output stream for real-time notification on telegram and there we have it a fully operational real-time youtube analytics pipeline we pulled data from youtube api sent it to kafka processed it with ksql db and we've sent it to our telegram for instant updates whenever there is a new activity on your youtube channel we get an instant update on telegram if you have found value in this tutorial do me a favor and hit that like button share it with your friends colleagues or anyone who could benefit from this if you run into any problems or you have any questions drop a comment below and i'll do my best to assist you if you haven't already make sure to subscribe for more tutorial like this one we've got plenty of cool projects in the pipeline that you won't want to miss that's it for today folks thanks for hanging out with me until next time keep coding keep learning and stay awesome